What's up, YouTube? And welcome to the next episode of my Collecting Goals series. Today we're going to take a look at a subset of PS1 games by my all-time favorite game developer, and that is Taito. We're going to take a look at all of the games uh, released in the U.S. by Taito, which is kind of a unique idea because Taito of America was actually out of business by the point of the PS1. Uh, they closed their operation around the year 1995. So what that means is they had to rely on a variety of third-party publishers to release their games in the U.S. while they were still moving very strong in Japan. So what you're going to see in this series is uh, 15 games that were released for the U.S. PS1 that uh, were released by a variety of different publishers. So I'll talk a little bit about all the different companies that made sure that Taito's games got in the hands of U.S. gamers. Some of those to better effect than others and uh, definitely had mixed results along the way. So we'll start off with probably the most notorious of those developers that release their games in the U.S., and that is Acclaim. And Acclaim obviously did not have a great track record for their own games. Uh, they were kind of known as the LJN of the 90s, and uh, ultimately just not a great uh, publisher on their own rights. So maybe that's why they looked to Taito to get some actual quality releases to release in the United States. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the games that they put out did not end up with the greatest of artwork, and although this is a fantastic compilation, the artwork on this one is definitely lacking. This one is Bubble Bobble, uh, also featuring Rainbow Island, so it's a two-in-one arcade pack where you get uh, both the games and their ar arcade versions, along with a variety of options in order to tweak the gameplay. Um, Acclaim really was inconsistent even on how they credited Taito, so this is one of the games that did get a small Taito logo on the cover. Just identify it as where it came from. Uh, the artwork on this one, like I said, is not great at all on the front. This game also came out on the Sega Saturn in much the same manner with the same artwork, just blown up a little bit bigger. And on the back you got kind of a mixed bag of uh, grainy screenshots that uh, show a couple screenshots of Rainbow Islands primarily before even the Bubble Bobble pictures, even though the game is known far less in the United States. So really just a strange marketing tactic on this game. It obviously didn't sell very well. Uh, but it is a nice one worth picking up, especially if you love the Bubble Bobble series as much as I do. So next we'll talk about a strange Taito arcade game that found its way to the US PS1. And this is by a different publisher. This one was released in the US by Jaleco, which is um, very strange because I think this is the only time that they worked together with Taito over all the years, at least in the US publishing market. Um, this game is Builder's Block, and it is an interesting arcade game that was originally released on the Taito F3 arcade hardware. And it is kind of a mix of Arkanoid along with some of their other uh, puzzle games, where you're, you're, the idea of the uh, arcade game Landmaker is you're building these um, little towers using like an Arkanoid style control at the bottom, um, just to really build up your towers and then collapse them essentially to clear the screen. The game overall is... Uh, Reasonably fun to play. It's a little bit complicated to keep up with the action, so I don't think this one fares as well as some of the other Taito puzzle games. But uh, cool that we got the game here released, you know, either way. Although I like Jaleco on their own rights, I don't think they did the uh, cover art of this one any favors, just with this kind of generic 3D uh, polygon-looking <laughs> cover art that doesn't really say much about the game itself. This one didn't sell too well, and I think it's probably one of the more obscure ones you're going to find for the PS1. So... Nice that it got here, but uh, probably not the best release overall as far as their, their marketing efforts. Uh, next up we have probably one of the best selling Taito games in the US, and this is the Bust a Move or Puzzle Bobble series. And this obviously is some of the most atrocious artwork on the whole PS1 library. Um, this cover is not notorious just for how ugly it is and just really does not do a good job of selling the game at all. You got this kind of clockwork orange effect of the uh, photoshopped guy in the the, uh, the the ball of the game <laughs> and he's got matchsticks opening up his eyes because of all the hot puzzle action keeping him up 24-7 I guess. Uh, I don't really know what they were thinking with this cover especially for a family friendly game like uh, Bust a Move but it is what it is. Um, obviously this game is great. I've put a ton of hours into this series over the years and uh, primarily I played this game on the Saturn but the PS1 version is essentially the same. I do think that this is a good one uh, to pick up and play, no matter how much of a gamer you are, it's real easy to, to get hooked on this game. And uh, this one's kind of unique also because it does also exist in a long box release. I don't own the long box version, but uh, nice that you have kind of your choice, whichever version you want of this ugly artwork, whether you want it blown up to a larger size 
or if you prefer the small jewel case version to kind of avoid it as much as possible. So next we'll move on to uh, another one of Acclaim's notorious releases by Taito. Uh, this one is Bust a Move 99. And overall, you would think they did a nicer job. They've got the uh, classic Bub and Bob characters on the front. They're a little bit crude. I don't think that's original Japanese art by any means. But at least they tried a little bit harder on this one. However, it's still a, a kind of a weird release. Um, they titled it Bust a Move 99 because the actual follow-up to this game had already been released on the USPS one. And I guess that made it sound less dated than calling it by its true series name, which is Bust a Move 3 or Puzzle Bobble 3. So we'll talk a little bit more about that next game here in a moment. Uh, but this one is probably not my favorite in the Bust a Move series. Uh, it doesn't have as many unique uh, features as the, as the next game in the series. And then um, it really didn't move too far forward from Bust a Move 2. So I think if you can get this one cheap, it's worth having. But it wouldn't be the first one I would recommend on the, uh, the PS1. So overall, Acclaim was getting a little bit better with this release as far as the cover art, but not great overall. Um, this game also came out on the US N64 with the same artwork, published by Acclaim, but uh, it was released, strangely, by Natsume on the Sega Saturn with its proper series name, Bust a Move 3, and that came out before and this one and also with better artwork. So there you go with uh, Acclaim getting the license when Natsume would have handled it better, which is a nice segue to one of the best Taito releases on the USPS one, and that is Bust a Move 4. This one was actually released by Natsume, another publisher that I have a great fondness for, and I think they really did a nice job with the artwork on this one. Uh, we got the nice colorful artwork of Bob and Bob on the cover. Really does a nice job of selling the game, much more so than those Acclaim releases do. This one uh, also is a pretty exciting version of the, of the series. Um, you had the first time that the pulley system was gameplay was introduced and it really adds a nice wrinkle to the gameplay. Um, you can also get this game on the Dreamcast, but Acclaim released the Dreamcast version and screwed up the art on that, so go figure. You're not even immune if you move to the next system. But uh, overall I think Bust a Move 4 is a must and it's one of my favorite title games to the PS1 and I'm really happy this one got a proper release by Natsume. Uh, just overall just so, such nice artwork. The next one I'm going to talk about is one that is actually the newest to my collection. I actually debated putting this game in. Uh, this was also another Taito F3 arcade hardware release called Cleopatra's Fortune. It's another arcade puzzle game. And this one was released by a budget publisher in the U.S. called Mud Duck, a Zenimax media brand. Doesn't that sound like a great quality publisher? Uh, these were $10 releases, so I can't knock them too much. Why I actually debated including this game in the video is although it was a Taito arcade release, the home version was uh, developed by a company named Ultron. And they were a Japanese developer, but they seemed to do that, like rush jobs on a lot of the Taito arcade games. Overall, the stuff that they put out, and even in Japan, uh, really isn't as nice as some of the stuff that Taito published themselves. So this one, you can pick up very cheap. Um, it doesn't even sell for more than its initial $10. And um, you can also get Cleopatra Fortune on other systems, and that's where I had it. So the PS1 version is new to me, uh, but again, this one is not probably the best of the title releases for the PS1. And then you kind of have that generic Egyptian artwork on the cover. Uh, it doesn't really sell the nice character that you have in the game, Cleopatra, that's your, your main mascot. So we'll move on from there. Uh, next up is another Acclaim published title release. And this one's kind of unique because it is the only long box that I'm going to show in this video. This one is a long box exclusive. And this was a very early uh, rail shooter called Jupiter Strike. It also was known in Japan as Zeitgeist. So you had this nice German title, <laughs> strangely, for the game in Japan that Acclaim chose to change up. Um, overall, there was a lot of rail shooters on the market during this time, the early PS1 days. So it doesn't really stick out maybe amongst the crowd. If for nothing, uh, nothing else, and it has some really nice colors in the game. And I think if you compare it to the stuff that like Namco and Psygnosis was putting out, it really stands out just for the, the amount of colors that were used. It doesn't have that just real generic gray look that a lot of the other ones did. So it definitely has some nice traits to it. Um, this one is not super expensive. It's pretty easy to pick up and play. It uh, doesn't have a whole lot of depth. There's not even like power-ups or anything like that really to pick up in the game, but definitely worth a look if you're interested in an early PS1 long box title. The next one I'm going to talk about is one of my all-time favorites for the PS1, and I would say by any publisher. This is Power Shovel, and this was uh, also released by Acclaim, but I think they did a better job with this one. This was one of their later releases that they put out um, from all the Taito games. So overall, Power Shovel 
is uh, probably a little bit difficult to understand if you've never played this game. It, on one hand, is a nice simulator of what it's like to operate a power shovel. Um, so you have all these, like, very uh, precise driver's tests and things like that you can do in the game to make sure that you're driving and operating the crane appropriately. But then it also just has this completely wacky side to it. And some of the mini games in this include things like rescuing giant sea turtles from swimming pools using your power shovel and measuring out spicy curry according to customer preference from a giant vat using the power shovel. Um, this game is really hard to describe some of the zaniness that happens inside of it. I really recommend this for anybody that's interested in something just very different for their PS1. This game actually had its own controller that was unique to it in Japan, and uh, I would love to own that someday. It's a nice twin stick controller. But this game honestly plays great with the DualShock controller because you use both dual sticks um, to really control the power shovel with nice accuracy. Overall, this one, Acclaim did a nice job just not messing with a good thing. There's um, some footage in this of like FMV and some of the menu screens where they left them honestly in full Japanese. And it could be seen as lazy, but it also could be seen as, again, just not messing with a good thing. So overall, I'm really happy uh, Acclaim brought, the, brought us this very unique title, and uh, I think it definitely is uh, a key piece of any title collection for anybody that's interested in something different for their PS1. Next we'll look at another Acclaim published title. This one is Psychic Force. This one came out pretty early in the Jewel Case uh, releases of the PS1, shortly after the Longbox games ended. And this one overall is very difficult to find. Um, this game, honestly, even a long time ago when I bought it, I had a long time uh, of searching before I was able to get a copy of this. Uh, Acclaim did a nice job on the artwork on this one, surprisingly, especially for an early Acclaim title published game. Uh, but they... Uh, Overall, the vibe of the game is pretty unique. Um, it was an early fighting game, 3D fighting game, and kind of the uniqueness about this one is you fight in a 3D uh, essential, like a, like a cube, that has these invisible walls that you can throw the, uh, the opponents into, and it really just adds a nice dynamic of 3D gameplay to it. I think they were trying to make this like Taito's franchise to compete with things like Tekken and um, all the other early fighting games that were really out in the early days of the PS1 and arcade of that era. Obviously, it wasn't overall as successful, but there was a sequel to this that came out on the Dreamcast and also some spin-off games to the Japanese PS1. So I think it's a nice entry to the series of all the title games we did get, uh, although not the most popular by any, any means. Um, has some really nice character designs, and then actually Acclaim even included this little bullet point that this features Zentata's hottest soundtrack. And uh, if you're not aware, Zentata is Taito's house band. So I don't really know how many people would have known that that bought this game or even looked at this, but I do think it is a nice feature that they're shouting out the, uh, the soundtrack uh, producer of the game as well. So next we'll look at uh, another one of the budget series games. This one is Puznik, and this is another one of those Mud Duck releases that was a $10 release. Um, this one is actually another Ultron um, developed game in Japan that was brought over. It's very lazy. It probably was a budget game in Japan as well. Puznik was a Taito arcade game, but this one doesn't include the arcade version. It's just a kind of cheaply modernized version for the PS1. Uh, if you look at how lazy the artwork is even on this, the uh, <laughs> screenshots even show the character names still in Japanese. A couple of them even. So um, I think they fixed that in the actual gameplay itself, but they didn't really do a whole lot else to it. And this game's even notorious for not even having background music as you play, just sound effects. So... Clearly a very cheap release, um, not one of Taito's best puzzle games even originally, and especially in this dumbed-down version, so I find this one a little bit hard to recommend, but I decided to include it in the video. Um, next we'll look at the best of the three games that Mud Duck released. This was yet another budget release. This one's Kix Neo, and Kix obviously is one of Taito's earliest arcade hits. Um, this one is pretty cool. It has a nice remade version of the arcade game uh, Volfied, or as we knew it in the U.S. on the Sega Genesis, Ultimate Kicks. So it was like kind of a 1990-era um, enhanced version of Kicks that deviates a little bit from the classic arcade game. Some nice newer updated graphics. Um, so it has a nice arcade um, port of Ultimate Kicks or Volfied included in this, and then you also have a new like enhanced PS1 version that's even more enhanced from the original arcade game, essentially. So overall, this is a really nice pack uh, for the $10. I've been playing this one recently. I can definitely recommend this because you can get this very cheap. 
Artwork on it's obviously pretty lazy, but again, you get what you get for the uh, $10. And at least it does try to incorporate the original Kix Arcade logo into the, the title there. So next we'll move on to yet another publisher of Taito Games in the U.S., and this is probably one of the coolest ones. That is Working Designs. And yes, they even had their hand in the Taito pot. So what is interesting about the relationship with Working Designs and Taito is if you look at their history, long before they released all their RPGs and strategy games that they're really known for, their very first ever releases in the U.S. were actually two Taito games for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, they started off their career by releasing games like Parasol Stars and Kadash, so they must have had some kind of relationship with Taito of Japan that enabled these games to come out much later on the PS1. And what we're looking at here is a great shooter called Raystorm. This is also known as Layer Section 2 in Japan. Uh, we got the first game in the series, this Galactic, Galactic Attack on the Saturn in the U.S., but this one was uh, a PS1 exclusive to get the sequel. So it's kind of convoluted how the series progressed. But this one has the nice foil artwork of the Working Designs games. I can highly recommend this game. It has a great feel to it. Um, really just a nice PS1 shooter that I think got its due in its day, although it didn't really sell all that well. If you like that game, we're going to move on to the next game, which is very closely related. And that is the third game in the series, and that is Ray Crisis Series Termination. This one, I think, just really looks the part on the PS1. I don't think it's as popular as Raystorm, but ultimately, I like this game better. I think the arcade version was on Taito GNET hardware, which is essentially a, a PS1, so it really fits at home on this PS1 release. I think it just translated nicely. Um, you get that nice working designs art again on this one, and I think it just makes a nice package. Uh, this one is pretty expensive now. It has been getting... Um, going up in price lately, and I think I, it's justified, honestly. I bought this game when it came out new, and it was pretty hard to find even then. So just a nice uh, quality shooter that you can get for your PS1 that uh, Working Designs did a nice job with their full-color artwork and cover and uh, manuals and things like that, too. I wish they'd done more of these title releases than just these two games. So we've got two games left of our 15-game games, 15 games subset. We're going to move on to yet another publisher of title games, and this is THQ. Uh, THQ obviously doesn't have the best reputation either, but this was kind of a modern take on Chase HQ. And if you've played that game, you'll be very familiar with how this game plays out, although this one is in 3D as compared to the earlier 2D releases in the series. Um, overall, they didn't mess with the artwork on this one. I think it's the exact same as the Japanese release. And overall, it's a, a fun-to-play, quick-action arcade game. Um, nice to get and uh, been going up in price a little bit lately because I think people are starting to realize this one's a little bit difficult to find. So that takes us to the last game in our subset, and this is yet another one of my favorites. This is another one that Acclaim did a nice job on. This is RC to Go, which is a great uh, top-down isometric RC car racing game. It has this nice, nice artwork with the Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo on the cover, and um, overall, again, they didn't mess with a good thing. It has some nice videos included in it that are left in Japanese language, and this is a very easy pick-up-and-play game that also plays great with the DualShock controller. Uh, if you've ever raced RC cars, you'll be very friendly and familiar with the gameplay style of this. And even if you haven't, this is a very easy game to pick up and play. can highly recommend this game, and it has some nice depth to the uh, car upgrades and things like that you can do along the way. So overall, that is a quick look of all of the 15 uh, Taito-developed games that were released in the U.S. for the PS1. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into this unique subset. Thank you guys for watching. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.